Hey, back with another episode of Sip the Tally Podcast. Had that good uh, intro music from Meek Mill while I was setting up for this podcast. He dropped uh, an EP with uh, four songs of just straight fire. So I had to, you know, get a little bit and put it on as my intro music today. Uh, today I'm sitting here with one of the uh, co-founders of uh, We Got Next, uh, Marco Scarica. How you doing today, man? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, what I wanted to know was um, basically your... How did you start out in sports? What's your sports background before we get into We Got Next? Man, I uh, just from growing up, really my first sport was soccer. And I grew up in South America, uh, and I didn't come to America until I was nine. So I was just, soccer was all I did, and then when I got to America, it was, it was football. So from there, I just took on the football, and, and I loved it. So I mean, I'm, I was that kid that watched the Olympics, watched skiing, watched, I watched everything, I watched soccer. I used to take, I used to write down the stats in baseball. <laughs> I mean, basketball, I used to collect basketball cards. And then football was what I really loved. Mm-hmm. But I loved all, I mean, I, I, I'm just a sports fanatic. Yeah, I remember doing the uh, baseball course when I was little. Yeah. And every little taste of money I got from cutting grass to washing cars, Everything. straight to the store, get that piece of gum and, and a box of uh, tops. Mm-hmm. And on my birthday, I got special, I got up deck. Up <laughs> you know, up deck with yeah. the high class cards. Yeah. <laughs> and they used to have the book that tell you all the prices about how, how much each card is and everything. Yep. Yeah. Had a little folder with the, the sheets and everything. all that good stuff. Um, you say you came from South America. What about in South yeah, America? Yeah, I was born in Chile. Born in Chile. Born in Chile. Um, what what made you guys come to America? Just for a better opportunity or, or what? Well, I came, my grandma lived here. Okay. And uh, I had never, I had met her one time at that point, but, you know, pretty much was poor down there. Mm-hmm. So uh, my mom ended up sending me here to live with my grandma when I was okay. nine. And, uh, so it was just better opportunity for me, you know. So it was kind of new because I didn't really, I didn't know anybody. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I didn't know my grandma really. But uh, she's the one who raised me, and then you know, I didn't, I didn't see my mom again until my high school graduation. Okay, was it was it here in Tallahassee where you were living? No, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, yeah. Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Um, as far as I think you told a story on the um, with a video that Huey did mm-hmm. about what stopped you from playing. Mm-hmm. You mind sharing that with us? Yeah. So I, um, like I said, fo- sports is what I did. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, but then in uh, my senior year in high school, I, I played through. I played football through. I played the season with cancer, mm-hmm. basically. I had a tumor in, in one of my testicles, mm-hmm. and uh, so it was, it, was, it was hard for me to run. But I just wasn't gonna tell nobody because I played football. That's what mm-hmm. I did. Kind of sound like somebody else I know. Yeah, I, I loved it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so after this, you know, so that's after the season, I uh, finally told my grandma, and I was like towards the end of my senior year. And my senior year, I finally told my grandma. Probably took me for some months after that. Mm-hmm. I told my grandma about it. You know, I said I need, I need to go see a doctor. And uh, so when I went to the doctor, and the doctor is basically like, you, you need to have surgery tomorrow. Wow. You need to be back tomorrow. She had surgery. So, you know, went back, had surgery, had cancer, went through chemo. I did, uh, I want to say, two, three months of mm-hmm. chemotherapy. At 18? So, yeah. Right around 18 years yeah, old? At 18. Right, right, right. Pretty much, I did the chemotherapy right when, after I graduated high school. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I did that. You know, I had to go to office every day. You know, get those chemicals pumped into you. And uh, so yeah, I did that for three months. After that, uh, you know, had another test. Mm-hmm. You know, they, 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 I still had points. So they, they call them benign points. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, gotcha. so they said, you know, basically cancer was gone at that point. Mm-hmm. I was in, I think, it's remission. Uh huh. That's. And uh, and then ever since, you know, I get checked every year. You know, blood cells and stuff like that. And, haven't had, hasn't came back ever since. Yeah, blessings on top of blessings right yeah. there. But moving on to a little bit, uh, something more current. Um, Why did you guys start, you and Coach Dickey? Why did you start uh, We Got Next? How did that conversation come about? Well, let me, uh, so it's me, Coach Dickey, mm-hmm. and one guy that doesn't really get mentioned a whole lot, man, but it's three of us. Okay, who's and the other guy? Shannon Baker. Okay. Uh, so he's a real big part of what, of what we do and what we've always done. Um, so it's me, Dickey, Coach Baker. Uh, but basically, you know, we start off part one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I had my own team. I started coaching when, when the kids, a lot of the kids and a lot of them go to Lincoln. Mm-hmm. You know, when they were six, some of them were six, some of them were seven years old. And uh, I coached for a couple of years there. And then Coach Baker and Coach Dickey, they were at one level above me in terms of the, the, the age groups. And they coached together for, I think, two years. Um, and then when my kids were going into junior peewee, instead of me going into my own team, I went in with, with Coach Baker. I got to know okay. him a little bit. We became friends. So we married. Basically, we started. I started coaching with him. Mm-hmm. We coached together. And at that point, Coach Diggy had took a break from coaching. Um, 
and then from there so we just always basically all those years like just had the same kids kept kept growing and growing and keeping them together so as, as the kids grew you guys kind of went with them right to keep kept, that uh, kept, 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 kept familiarity with them yeah I got you and then even even middle school I, you know, I went on after part one I coached at Cobb Middle School and after Cobb Middle School then I coached uh, their freshman year mm -hmm. at Lincoln and uh, so as far as we got next and starting it uh, me and D were just talking. I had my kids play with uh, Triple Bs for a year. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my first experience with seven-on-seven seven seven football. And uh, so I was just kind of learning. You know, we went on trips. I went I went, I went, along and kind of just kind of see how it went. You know, kind of started learning a little bit about it. And um, in terms of tournaments, what's available, that kind of stuff. And then from there, I was like, you know, I want to do it myself. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's, it's hard to just watch. And, you know, and, and, and you want to do it. Right. So Especially I, if you've been coaching all these years. Right. You've been coaching all these years. So at that point, you know, I, uh, me and Dickie were, were good friends. Mm -hmm. So I was talking about, you know, wanting to pretty much start our, start our own team. Okay. And it's something he had been talking about, too. So at that point, that's, that's when we took all our guys and just put it okay. together. Once, once you guys decide to say, hey, we're going to do this, um, we got next. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, where did the name come from? Dick came up with it, so we were sitting there brainstorming, trying to come up with stuff, and uh, he came up with the name. Okay. Uh, any any um, motivation for it, or just y'all was just throwing out names, trying to see what you like? We were throwing out names, and then he threw out "We Got Next." I was like, kind of like that, and then it just kind of we we thought about because we were trying to come up with something that meant, meant something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when we talked about "We Got Next," you know, I got no matter at what level, whether it's this year, next year, next year, next year, five years down the line, you know, you still gonna have guys who want to have next. Gotcha. You know what I'm gotcha. saying? So that's so that, that stuff. What uh, what does it take to be a member uh, of, of We Got Next? Uh, we started out, we had uh, pretty much the first year, our first two years, we just started out with one team, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and it was more of a, you know, we had our core, which was like, we had like, already had like 16 players, mm -hmm. and you can't go to a tournament with no more than 24. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, we, we needed to fill a couple of spots. So at that point, we we recruited. Mm -hmm. You know, we say we asked a couple. Coach Dickie, uh, he had two nephews. Mm -hmm. You know, so we got his two nephews. He had a couple of relationships where he knew a couple of guys, um, knew their parents. Mm -hmm. So we had we got a couple of those guys, and um, and then for the most part, it's been kids that I've coached or we've all or we've all coached at some point. Okay. For a long time. Now, as far as this point point going forward, you know. Now we're getting to that point where those guys that we had for so long are going to be recycled. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to move on and they're going to. So this coming year, we plan on expanding. We, we want to try to have a younger team and gotcha. an older team. Younger team, would that be? Uh, would you? What? 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 What's the classification for? It's like there, eighteen there's, and under. Or there, there's there's high school division, which mm -hmm. is basically fi uh, fifteen and up. Mm -hmm. Uh, or about about to turn 16 and up, and then there's a younger division, future stars division, which is 15 and under. Okay, and that's mainly freshmen and like middle schoolers. Is freshmen, eighth graders. They have other divisions. We go to some tournaments and mm -hmm. stuff. You know, like 9, 10, oh, yeah. 11, 12. But you know, you're better off playing. I think you're better off playing in a middle school and high school. Division, yeah. yeah, I got you. As far as the, um, I'm sure because you guys travel all around the, I'm gonna say southeast. Yeah. Uh, who? Who bears that financial burden? Do you guys like have sponsors or? We we have sponsors that sponsor uh, like our uniforms. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so we're able to uh, Mutaki Akbar, mm -hmm. the law firm, Akbar Law Firm. He pays for our uniforms. Um, but in terms of the travel, the first year what we did was whenever we have a tournament, we calculate you know, how much is the room, how mm -hmm. much is the transportation. I work for the state, so I get a discount on the vans. Mm -hmm. You know, so that helps out a lot in terms of transportation. Um, and we just said who, who's going, who's not. Typically, most of the guys are going, so we split up whatever the cost is going to be. Split it up in the number of players, mm -hmm. and everybody pays their part. Uh, this year did it a little different, which kind of backfired mm -hmm. in a sense. But this year we uh, said, okay, this is what we're going to do. Based on what we did last year and how much it cost, you know, this is how much it's going to cost us to do these tournaments. Gotcha. And, um, you know, it's like, okay, so everybody pretty much, in order to make it fair to where, like, well, you didn't have four parents and we're not going, and then it makes it more for the other parents, mm -hmm. you know, like, everybody basically is paying this fee for the year, which mm -hmm. is going to pay for all these tournaments. Gotcha. You know, but did it that way, it didn't quite, you know, didn't always work out. You know, we ended up, you know, coming out of our pocket mm -hmm. a lot, so... But well, most coaches come out their pocket yeah, anyway. Coaches so. come out of your pocket anyways. Mm -hmm. Always been like that. The um I know you guys had a tournament scheduled here. Mm -hmm. Did did the rain kind of affect your financial obligations by not being able to put that on like you wanted to? Because I know it, it, it I think it poured down Saturday. Yeah. And then you got a, like maybe from eight to twelve of no rain Sunday. 
yeah. before it started back up. Well, sun- Sunday was good. Sunday was able to have a full day. Everything worked out um, real good on Sunday. Mm-hmm. On uh, Saturday, yeah, definitely killed us because we bought we bought food and we ended up just giving it away. Wow. You know, instead of throwing it away, we had, we had already cooked. We ended up giving all the food away to some of the teams that were there. Okay. You know, um, and then also we had a couple of teams that were there and decided to go ahead and leave because they weren't prepared to play a whole tournament in one day. Right. You know, and so we so and those teams happened to not have paid their money yet. Yeah, I know how to so, go. <laughs> so yeah, so that that that's that that day really put, put set set us back. Okay. But and, it, so it set us back now, mm-hmm. but we still were able to run a very good tournament on Sunday. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that pretty much you know why it set us back for for this year. For next year we're gonna have, have another tournament. Right. You know, it pretty much set things up so like and okay. That was your first tournament, right? That was the first one. And and I can kinda speak on it a little bit. Back in Mississippi, I, I used to throw softball tournaments, which were kind of similar to what you tried to do yeah. with that. Yeah. And the thing is, you don't want to be the butthole to like, like, hey, I need this money before you play. Yeah. But you kind of got to be got the butthole yeah. in order to make sure you don't come out. Yeah. Because, I mean, I can remember running tournaments where I was, the ref- umpires didn't show up, so I had to umpire. Mm. In between games, I had to run the concession stand and then make sure people came and turned lights on so I, I, I sympathize with you as yeah, far as yeah, trying to run the rest, them rest ain't cheap I, well, I know the rest ain't cheap I know not at all but we weren't able to do that because that's what we were going to do mm-hmm. but because it, the whole Saturday got rained out those teams left before they even got to play gotcha you know, gotcha so, yeah. alright what would you do different uh, as far as starting out because of some knowledge that you've gained you, being year this year two or three for you guys this is this year was two. Mm-hmm. Next year it'll be three. Okay, so some something that you've learned in the past two years that you wish you knew before you started. Something. Uh, I think one one of the things I've learned a lot about is uh is the recruiting process. Mm-hmm. You know, recruiting process, and then just the process of uh, college visits, how to go about them, and mm-hmm. things like that. You know, that first year I didn't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. You know, this this year. After that first year, I learned a lot about, you know, recruiting process and just, you know, how, when to take college tours and how to take college tours, how to, how to contact, you know, contact mm-hmm. the coaches, you know, not really knowing much about it before. Right. So uh, if I'd have known that ahead of time, you know, I'd probably be even more ahead of the curve now. Okay. But um, that'd be one thing. Um, other than that, though, I mean, that, that honestly, it's been, it's been real smooth mm-hmm. selling in a sense. Because we work well together. Right. I have a, I have a, uh, I have a skill set that works with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Antonio Dickey, he has a skill set that works with certain things. Mm-hmm. And then Coach Baker, he, like we just, we, we really each have a, our yeah. own different skill set. Yeah, yeah, work well together. Yeah, we work well together because mm-hmm. we, we, we complement each other. I'm, I'm yeah, not so good that's at, what I was looking for. Yeah. yeah, I'm not good at what Dickey does. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's real good marketing. He's real good with words. He's real good talk, talking to people. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a stay behind the scenes. I don't really like to be seen. Mm-hmm. I don't really like to talk to everybody because if I don't know you, I don't really know what to say to you. Right. You know, so so we we, we, we gel real well because we're able to kind of, he's good at certain things. Mm-hmm. I'm good at certain things, and it just matches together. Nothing wrong with that. That's that's what most most staffs need. They need different personalities that can can feed off each other. It's like my strengths be your weaknesses, mm-hmm. and my weaknesses be your strengths, and just a whole staff full of that. And that's that's what's gonna prevent. Uh, I mean, produce good. Um, um, quality kids because right. they can see the best qualities in each person and mm-hmm. take that away from each guy um, as far as uh, kids in the program when they leave when they finish what we got next mm-hmm. what 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 should they come out of your program being what's, uh, the, what's the end game for kids that come through we got next what, what should they learn uh, friendship friendship I mean, I mean, you know, football is a big part of what we do. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it, it didn't start off as just football. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? It was about keeping these guys together. I tell the guys all the time, you know, like 10 years down the line, these are the guys you're going to call and say, hey, let's go take a vacation. Yep. You know, so these guys are going to call and say, hey, let's, let's go to DR, let's go to Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you're going to have a doctor, you're going to have a lawyer, you, you might have a football player, maybe, possibly, probably not. Right. You know, because it's just that that hard to get there. Right. But you might have a you know veterinarian. You know, you you might you might get a ticket. And you might call your lawyer, buddy. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And so I I, I say, friendship friendship is one of the biggest things that I hope they take away from from it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, on top of you know work ethic, I mean, we work hard. You know, and we try to do what we do on the field. We try to do it the right way. Gotcha. You know so we we don't just. You know, tournaments are a byproduct of what we do. Mm-hmm. You know, we go to tournaments and stuff, but they're, they're fun. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They like to go to tournaments. They like to compete. But at the end of the day, we practice. 
we work on technique. You know, we do things that we that will hopefully translate to what they're doing on the field. Gotcha. On, on actual Friday nights. And wh- what I've noticed from uh, the guys that are on your team is when they face each other with their schools, mm-hmm. they want to guard each other. Mm-hmm. They, they want to compete against each other. And I like that because to me, there's nothing, no greater thing in the world than competing. Because right. I, I, I dislike losing at Monopoly. Like my, my son beat me in Monopoly like one summer. I was distraught. I, I was upset, boy. Just, just something simple like that. Yeah. So that's the, that competition breeds, brings out the best in most people. Yeah, I, and I, 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 I love it. I stopped racing my kids, you know, because I knew, okay, we get to that point where y'all can beat me. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not putting my, my cleats on no more. You know, we don't race no more. <laughs> Funny yeah. story. We went to my wife's family reunion two years ago, maybe three years ago. And uh, I mean, it poured down raining. Mm. So the car was maybe... 200 yards from where we were so we was going to make a run for it and so let me see Ivan's going to be 17 so I'm going to say he's 14 mm-hmm. so we, I said well, we're going to make a run for it let's take off so I took off bam I'm leaving because you know I've always been faster than them mm-hmm. but we get about 15, 20 yards into the thing both of them zoomed past me I just started walking <laughs> <laughs> I, I never felt so old in, in, in one moment in my life right there yeah. and I was like well Father time is undefeated. That's it. <laughs> it's undefeated. And it's your now, time. It's your time. Now I do have a, a cousin that uh, he ran track in high school, and um, his dad, which you know he's dead now, uh, Shay Hart. His dad raced him. He was a senior in high school, running the second leg on a four by one. So you know this guy could run. Mm-hmm. He was talking smack with his dad. His dad was a big stuff talker. He put on his shoes at. I know Shay probably was 44, 45, and outran the son. Mm-hmm. And about a block, just about you know, like a street block. Yeah, boy, that, I was amazed. <laughs> he got down there like old man. He ain't stretching nothing. He just got down there, got in the block, boom, took off. So he took off, and I'm thinking, he well, he ain't, gonna, he ain't gonna hold this up. He, he gonna pull something. He, basically, yeah, he ran just fast enough. All right, as far as uh, we got next, what's your future plans? We got next because I think you got something else brewing that we talked about a while ago. Yeah, you got um, we talked about adding baseball, mm-hmm. um, and he possibly you know, and then. <laughs> Basically making We Got Next a brand, you know, you got baseball, you got softball for girls, you know what I'm saying? Um, and just kind of make, make, trying to branch off into, because you have, you at the end of the day, we want to provide opportunities. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, for whoever it may be for kids, you know, so if we had, we can't, obviously we can't do all the, the stuff ourselves, you know, mm-hmm. we can't coach baseball ourselves and right. we can't co- coach wrestling ourselves or, you know, softball ourselves. Mm-hmm. But if we, if we, if we provide a platform for other, other coaches in, in the community to, that want to volunteer and want to get into, into some of the stuff, mm-hmm. then we can provide opportunities for a lot, for, for, for more kids, you know, so we're talking about doing baseball. Um, and, Still in works. Yeah, still, still in the works, you know. Uh, and D- D- Dick is doing a lot, of this, a lot of this. Really, he, you know, he has, you know, he has some connections and mm-hmm. some people that that kind of been in the baseball world. Me, I'm a baseball fan, but I, I wouldn't even pretend that I can coach it. Right. You know, I can coach some basics mm-hmm. just because I understand sports. Yeah, I, I went back this year and and it was while it was very fun. I had forgot a lot of the stuff I knew, mm-hmm. and it started to come back as I was out there. Mm-hmm. But I still, I, I it was eye opening. Yeah. But I, I don't think as long as I'm at Lincoln and they have me, I'm gonna be out there. Yeah. Cause I had I had a blast yeah. out there. And um and I, I love baseball. I grew, played baseball all four years in college. I mean in high school, played, you know, a year and a half in college. So mm-hmm. I I love the game. But um and you know, that might be something I can not necessarily cause I don't wanna commit to coaching because all my all my time is being coaching now, but right. I'll definitely be around and try to help out. Um And uh, just, just just to kinda of figure out a little bit, you know, in terms of uh uh, kind of expanding too when you expand and have more teams you know that also need more coaches yeah you know what I'm saying and uh, so one of the things at the end of the day part of what we want to accomplish as we got next and having a 707 team in Tallahassee is we want for the kids to get better for their respective schools mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying we want them to be prepared you know we don't really we, we're not we don't want to oppose what High school coaches are doing, mm-hmm. or their schedules, or all that kind of stuff. Right. So part of part of what I what I've thought about is you know is opening up to where maybe maybe some high school coaches want to come out and coach on Saturdays or Sundays mm-hmm. when we practice. Yeah, I, I I thought about that. I don't know if we can though. We'd have to look into it and see. I think you can. I mean, there's coaches that got high, that got seven on seven coaches now. 
oh, December really? 17th. No, I sure do. Man, I think about it. Sure do. So I think sure there, I think there's there there are rules, but it might just be like for the head coach. Okay. I want to say. Okay. I don't know that exactly what the rule is, but you know, and that if, if you had, let's say, somebody from Gabby come out, you know, just help out, you know, work with the kids, mm-hmm. you know, somebody from Lincoln, and you had somebody from Rickers, then now you now you 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 have a hand in in how kids are progressing. Right. You know what I'm saying? You you you're able to put your knowledge with somebody else's knowledge and because at the end of the day that's what, the that, that's what it really is all about mm-hmm. you know, so we're not really for us it's not for you know it's, it's, it's for the kids try to help them get better right I um I talked with Jeff Martin um, and we talked about recruiting and we talked about 707 and um you know we talked about how the the circuit itself is kind of starting to try to get a bad name yeah because some tournaments you know they they don't have referees and yeah. they try to maximize money and they they promote Confusion and and whatnot and how you know like I told him I used to love seven on seven like I wish they had it when I was in high school yeah but unless we get some kind of uh, uniformity as far as rules and, and referees and stuff like that I don't see it staying around too long before something just just drastic happens and I and I understand the negative the negative stigma behind the seven on seven because mm-hmm. you know you do got teams that you know just don't do it for the right reason right you know it's I I, I don't I'm not I'm not with just hey you know that's part of why we we got next eight five zero. All I got is from Tallahassee, right? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have two guys that are from Jacksonville and mm-hmm. three guys that are from Georgia. And I mean, that means you never practice together. Right. You just go in and play in the tournament. Right. And that's not what football is about. It's right. a team sport. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So you know, in terms of what we try to do, like we, we run a real offense. You know what I'm saying? We're not running drag routes at one yard. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We <laughs> we running real. We run real concepts. We mm-hmm. run real routes. We teaching real, real, real yeah, stuff. Yeah, and, and with them learning concepts, those things translate. To, to their high school team and beyond if they play, you know, if they play in college because, I mean, it's only so many concepts you can run and they just be called different names. Right. And you now I learned a lot of that from, from Green that a lot of stuff that I, that we called where I came from mm-hmm. was some of the same stuff he ran. Mm-hmm. He just called it different. Right. And realizing his terminology was pretty much NFL terminology. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I learned from, from Green too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Let's get a little little pers- personal. You also have uh, two members of We Got Next that live in your household. Yeah. And uh, let's start off with uh, with Chris. Mm-hmm. You coached him as a freshman. Yeah. Uh, he played a little quarter. He kind of rotated quarterback with uh, two two other guys. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I want to know what was that summer like going into his sophomore year before, you know, he was like given that opportunity to say, hey, he just might be our quarterback. What did you have to – like coax him or, or, or just kind of what kind of advice did you give him as far as trying to get the job you talking about going into sophomore year going to so- which would have been last year yeah last year so uh, to freshman year for him was a little rough mm-hmm. in terms of you know he didn't feel like he was getting a fair fair shot mm-hmm. and uh, so he, he, at one point he asked me you know, can, I, can I just move the receiver I said look man, you gotta do what you gotta I don't know you can't move the receiver just, just, just do what you do everything mm-hmm. falls in place if you right. do what you gotta do you know what I'm saying? So he stuck it out, you know, he did, 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 um, did what he had to do, practice, you know, all that stuff. Um, once, uh, to the way it happened was, you know, when, um, when uh, that spring, leading into the spring, Vandy took over. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Vandy guy, you know, called, called me and, 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 uh, and basically he told me, uh, he's like, look, we're going into the spring, Chris, our quarterback, Chris, my quarterback. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like, okay. You know, yeah, that's kind of how it started for him. And before before we got you know the other guys in there, I was kind of building what I was going to do around him mm-hmm. because I I've had guys like that in the past that could 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 throw it, could could run it, and were one of the fastest guys. Mm-hmm. And so I've you know my career has been built off guys like that. Mm-hmm. So I was building stuff for him. In which when I found out when we did get you know, Coach Thompson, I found out we was going to run spread mm-hmm. that. You know, my eyes lit up because I know he's he is a spread guy. Yeah. But can also sit back and throw the ball also. Yeah. So you know, and he runs just enough to keep himself safe. And he and that's the thing. He's, he's not a runner. He's just really smooth. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's so he's real real smooth with what he does. You know, his movements are smooth. You know, everything's kind of like with a purpose in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know, not a lot of wasted movement. I guess you could say. I I agree with that. I um like I said, my son takes the pictures and uh, a Scambia game. We um. He took, I think Chris took off running up the middle, and then he had a, a set of about five or six pitchers 
where it didn't even look like he was touching the ground. Mm-hmm. And I think he was like, this is a scramble up the middle or whatever. We got a bunch of yards. But it, on those pictures, it looked like he, his foot never touched the ground. Everything was like a smooth glide yeah. when, you, when you go through the pictures. Um, as far as, you know, because this year he had, um, I want to say 20, 20, 20, 22 touchdowns, 20. something like that. Yeah, 20, 24. Pass, passing touchdowns and maybe yeah. what, six interceptions? Six. That's, that was one of the better uh, touchdown to, to interception ratios in the state. Yeah. How do, how do you think he handled that that, that success as far as being a sophomore? Because that's uh, a good season even for seniors. Yeah, that's a great great season. I, honestly, I I don't let I don't let my kids get. I'm I'm that guy that doesn't get too high and get mm-hmm. too low. You don't gotcha. see me in the stands really screaming or getting getting excited or mm-hmm. you know too. I get excited, but uh, you won't see me really get too high. And they they kind of took on the same personality. So. For him, it is, if you ask him, you know, even when I ask him, you know, y'all excited? You know, like, it's another day, you know, his business as usual. And I, and I get that from him, definitely, because when he throw a touchdown, he come over there and give you a high five. He throw an interception. I mean, he, he'll, his head may go down, but he don't really show it too yeah, much. He just ready to get back out there and do it again. Yeah, really too much. And so that, I think that, he not, he's not, I won't, I won't say he's a leader, but right. that quality in him leads, if right. that makes sense. He, it leads by example. Exactly. He's not really gonna say nothing. Right. Yeah. And that, that's and you know, I guess I had Kamari on here and I plan to get other guys on here, but Chris won't be on here. Mm-hmm. Because I know mm-hmm. it's gonna be like pulling teeth trying to get a word out of. Yeah. And the same thing with Marco. And going into Marco, Marco plays receiver for us. Um how about at the same question. From his freshman year, how how did he handle because I think he was injured most of that year. He with, with the cast, he, you know he played a lot. He yeah, played, he played a, half the, the season with the cast on. How, yeah. How'd you handle him? How'd you get him out there to play with that cast on, confidence wise? Can you play or not? <laughs> you know, uh, I know he when he because he ended up fracturing his thumb. Uh-huh. He had that cast, and uh, that first game, you know, he couldn't run. Mm-hmm. So you know, the running hurt his hand. But then they had a bye week, which made it two weeks off. And then that next week, um, he was able to come back. You know, he's like he, he could run without any pain. Mm-hmm. So, he yeah he played he played with the cast after that. Um, it's just, it's just I mean, can you play? Do you want it? You know, right. he, he he he's had a lot of injuries coming up, mm-hmm. like moving, just little stuff, just nagging stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, like little fractures and stuff like that. And uh, so he knows what he knows the difference between being injured. And being just kind of being hurt, hurt. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? So typically, if he, if he if he's like I can't I can't go like mm-hmm. I can't like he, he's probably actually something wrong with it at the moment. Gotcha. And as far as um, this year for him, I think in my opinion he's had a breakout year, yeah. and he provides a, a, a great one-two punch with us for with him and, and Kamara at receiver. Um, what 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 is what does he look for? You know, at, on game day, what 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 is his preparation like? Because I know you, he he probably talk to you because he rarely talks. That's why I'm asking you. Right. He, you know, what going to each game? What what is he looking for in DBs that he feel like he can kind of do to explore them or whatnot? Well, we we, we watch film, you know. So you know, uh, the team watches film. Mm-hmm. We actually, when they get home, we we still watch film. So we we go through practices. We watch the film from practices. Mm-hmm. You know what false steps. You know that kind of stuff in terms of why uh, defense. You know he. He, he, I, I would say he looks at what what they're doing. Are they sitting flat-footed? Are they catching? Or are they running with you? Um, are they quick enough to handle, you, handle your cuts? Mm-hmm. Um, what defense are they playing most of the time? You know, are they, are they, in, are they in, he understands the difference between zone and, and right. man. You know, so if they play in man, he know he got to run his route a little different. Mm-hmm. You know, if they play in zone, he know where to kill him at. Right. You know, so he he, he pretty much kind of just look, and we talk, we talk about it, you know, like, this is what they're doing, and they try to look at uh, if uh, defensive adjustments. Mm-hmm. So if they if they have a tendency to kind of start moving a certain way before they blitz or right. or, or, or roll the coverage, you know, you kind of try to pick up on some of those things. You know what? Now that you say that, you going over that type of stuff with them, and they get you know that's come the same stuff they're getting from us. Yeah. But the, I think the key is for them to be sitting there together watching, mm-hmm. and then they can kind of know you know well if they do X Y Z. You know, you be looking for the ball here or this mm-hmm. and the other. Like in case in point, the Jamboree. Yeah. Marco caught the long touchdown. Mm-hmm. When Chris threw the ball, I know I'm sitting in the box. I'm like, man, he not even look. Then I just stopped. At the last second, he hit him right in his hand. He'll never stop running. I was I was in the stand <laughs> the same way. Like, hold. You know, he ain't he not looking. Right. You know, Marco say he, he just. 
he because the ball wasn't designed to come to him. Mm, it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't. But they to rolled come. a different way. And you know this happened last year. Mm-hmm. You know it happened last year when we played Rickards. Uh-huh. We played Rickards. Marco ran like a little, like a seam route, mm-hmm. but the ball was designed to go to the other side. And typically, that's you know, it's not coming his way. Uh-huh. So he ran a seam route, which would have would have been open. And the ball pretty much hit him in his hands, mm-hmm. but he never turned his head because he just thought the ball was not coming. He just running his route trying to get the defense to open up. Yep. But uh, it, it ended up hitting him in his hands, and he never turned around and looked for the ball. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I kind of harp on him about that, like it, whether it's coming or not. Right. When it went, you know, turn. Yeah, you get your head turned around just in case. And uh, he he got his head turned around now, right on time. Now what I will give him props for is when and I've had receivers in the past kind of when they not getting the ball not kind of run their routes mm-hmm. I would give him his props for that because when even when he's not getting it he gonna you know bust his butt mm-hmm. to, to do whatever because he understands that this route is designed to take somebody right. some out the way right. and him knowing that you know as a sophomore it, it was really big for us this year especially as we got into the season and started picking up a few wins mm-hmm. um, as far as uh, somebody because you got a bunch of seniors this year I think on your, your we got next squad right uh, most of them juniors we got a couple seniors we got Tyrion Lee's a senior mm-hmm. Chris John Williams from, from Rickers a senior uh, Trevor's gonna be a senior Kamari uh, Kamari is senior and those, those might be might so, be the only guys well with those four ish guys and you know maybe guys go other places how can someone get on we got next if they want to be on that team and, and that's something me and uh like we haven't had an end of a meet, end of year meeting yet me okay. and the coaches but uh that's something we're going to discuss how do we go into next year what is going to be our plan in terms of getting more players mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? one of the things i never really liked was uh uh was having paying you know charging kids to have tryouts and mm-hmm. stuff you know there's, there's no reason to charge somebody to try right. and, and what i've thought about you know this is just an idea i've thought about is is making our process for getting kids the same process that a college uses to get kids from high school you know you got you, know, you got to have a certain gpa mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you you uh maybe talk 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 to the middle school coaches and say hey what, what do you think about this guy just mm-hmm. like a college coach would come in and ask about a high school guy. Gotcha. Um, and kind of really go, go through a real recruiting process mm-hmm. and try to really find, because we want high character guys. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's real big, because you know, we go out of town. Mm-hmm. You know, things can happen out of town if you got the wrong guys with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then, you know, we do a lot of stuff like guys just come to my house, you know, I barbecue and hang out, go to the pool. You want to have guys that you like to have around. Right, I understand you know, that. So uh, we probably do some kind of recruiting process. As far well as the, the contact info for we got next. Uh, what what what's you guys uh, Twitter handle and, and all that stuff? Uh, Twitter, uh, we got next eight five zero, and uh, Instagram is also we got next eight five zero. We also got our website, we got next eight five zero dot com. Okay. And uh, what's what's on the website? Is it, is it highlights or, or uh, it- right now on the website? You know, we pretty much got a about us. You know, mm-hmm. got some pictures of our guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm also because uh, I do the website. You okay. know, so I, 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 I'm a computer program. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I build websites, build, I build web applications. So what, partly what, what, I'm, what I need to finish, which I'm working on, but I haven't finished it yet, was we're also going to have a page for our players where it has like their player card and it shows all their information so that college coaches can, you know, you can get to their Twitter, you can mm-hmm. get to their Instagram, you can get to, to their huddle film, mm-hmm. you know, you can get their GPA, gotcha. you know, they got ACT scores, and you can get all the information from our guys on our webpage. So that's something I'm working on right now. Okay, that's going to be big too. Yeah. Like I, I was talking to uh, Trevor about that same thing because Trevor did his own right. website. Yeah. And he got all that type of information you just mentioned on there. And, you know, for coaching, go there and get that at one spot. You know, that 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 can't do nothing but uh, that can only help you because they ain't got to go find your information. Right. They can go get, they can find your Twitter. Because I mean, even if you try to hide it, they gonna find it. Yeah. And do do you guys speaking of that? Do you guys talk to them about Twitter and stuff like that? Yeah, we we talk to them a lot. You know, and you know, and Diggy he harps on them a lot about uh, like Twitter names and mm-hmm. things like that. Like you know, it's easier for somebody to find you. They can actually see your name. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, we had talks about Twitter, what to put on Twitter, what what not to put on Instagram. Right. People you know will look at the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we 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 had and we got a group me. Right, you know, we got a team group me, so we communicate with them. You know, send you know somebody send out messages here and there. Uh, a lot of my friends, you know, they'll talk back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we we communicate a lot with them, even even throughout the season. You know, not necessarily just seven on seven, mm-hmm. just throughout because we're so close with the guys and all the guys. We we talk to them a lot. Yeah, I like the fact that all the guys are are local guys, yeah. and they put aside, you know, the green and gold, the blue and white, blue and whatever. 
to come together in the summer and just get better. And that, that, that's what it's all about because they come back, that you can come back to your high school team almost a totally different person when mm-hmm. you go against the best in the city, yeah. you know, every time. I'm going to tell you, what, one of the guys, I won't, I won't say his name, but one of the guys on our team on our on a trip back from, from something we went to, uh, it was just me, him, and three other guys, two other guys. And I, he was like, yeah, we got next change in my life. I said, I'm like, well, why, you, why you say that? He's like, yeah, if it, if it wasn't somebody from my team, I wouldn't mess with nobody. Mm-hmm. You know, but, but you know, kind of like being around different guys, you know, I would, it was, yeah, guys ain't all that bad. So right. Like, now when you play them or when you're around them, you know, it ain't really no big deal. Right. You know what I'm saying? You see it, you know, they cool. Right. You know? And, I mean, you can always, you can compete once you cross the line. Yeah. That's, that's a totally different thing, but we all got to live together. Right. We all got to live together. We all got to get along. We all got to learn how to function in mm-hmm. society. Yeah. You can't just, I mean, life is bigger than your hood or your school or your, or your city. Yeah. You know, and I, it took me being an adult, probably my 30s, to, to realize that there, I mean, I knew it was a world out there. Right. But to actually experience the world. Yeah. And, and know and other cultures and, and open my mind to it. Mm-hmm. So they, the earlier they can learn that, the better because, you know, I think growing up, we thought we was competing with our classmates or people yeah. in our city or being people in our state. Mm-hmm. But now these guys don't have to compete globally for jobs and, 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 and everything and, else. And that's the thing, you know, competition to football, you know, yeah, we compete against each other. You're going to be competing for scholarships. Right. You're going to be competing for internships. You're going to be competing for actual jobs. You know what I'm saying? So it's all, all this all this stuff translates to everything. You're going to go through this in a different form of fashion. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the same. You're going to have to have the same kind of mindset. Gotcha. Gotcha. And to wrap this up, um, you know, this is episode of Sip the Tally Podcast with Coach Marcos Carica of We Got Next. And I, you know, I, I invited, I extended the invite to Coach Dickey also. He had a, a prior engagement. He was out of town. Uh, I, I wanted to get him and mess with him about the list that he put out that caused so much controversy. But, uh, you know, we'll, I'll get him on the next go around and we'll talk about that. Uh, the background music that you're going to hear, you know, in the undertones are Cool Nights by artists called Diggy. And I got it off uh, non copyrighted music off uh, YouTube. And there's a lot of YouTube music out there that you can get that's not copyrighted to put in your podcast. And I just wanted to shout that person out because I've been finding something different. So every time I do one, and I want to kind of give back since they give me this free music to use. Uh, that's another episode of Sip the Taylor Podcast with Coach Parika. We got next. Uh, check him out because, you know, he's doing positive things in the neighborhood. Get your kids out there with him. That's a good, cool dude. All right, we out. Appreciate it.